Well, good morning, everybody. You guys ready to meet God in his Bible this morning? I want to encourage you to go ahead and get your minds set to do that. We're going we're gonna to actually look at Scripture. We're going to work through concepts and ideas, ways that God wants us to connect around who he is and what he's doing in our lives. And today we're going to be doing something that I believe is true really every Sunday, but it's true today as well, and that is we're going to listen to God talk to us about something, and if we hear it and apply it, it really can change our lives forever. So I want to encourage you this morning, just decide in advance that I'm going to hear God, I'm going to capture what he talks to me about, and this week I'm going to work on that so that I follow him through the days of my life this week. How many of you know that it's just better to follow God? In case, you're not, in case you're not sure about that, let me assure you, it is better to follow God. We're starting a series, uh, actually started it last Sunday, called Basics. And the idea is that there are some things that God put together in the way he created us and the way he works with us, that they are basic but important. How many of you know that football is just around the corner? See, why is it when I say get your Bibles out, I say something about football, I get cheers and hollers. If I say Dallas Cowboys, I get jeers and yells. But the bottom line, I'm just kidding. Football is just around the corner. And one of the things that I am reminded of, whether it's uh, whatever professional sport it is, is at the beginning of every season, the high-skilled players submit themselves to coaching structures and authorities that take them through drills on the basics. And it really doesn't matter how accomplished you are, it doesn't matter how excellent you are or how skilled you have become, you still have to go back through the orientation of that basic. And the smartest players understand it and lean into it. So it doesn't matter how long we've, in a corollary, in a, in a relatable way, it doesn't matter how long we've been a Christ follower, how many years we've been going to church. There are seasons in our lives that whether we're here for the first time or we're here again, we need to actually understand what the basics are when it comes to following God. Because it's the basics that are the foundation that everything else is built on. So we started this last Sunday in the basic basic. Is that a, is that a real deal? The basic basic? The, the prime meridian? The number one numero uno issue? The bottom line? is that God created you. He created me. He created us to love us. He did not create us so he could have a world full of people who do his bidding. He's not an egomaniac. He's a God who is and a God who loves. And he created us to be the receivers of that love. So the basic fundamental truth that colors everything about how we connect with God, whether we lean into him and engage him or whether we resist him, is do we understand that he loves us? He loves us. So that's some of the points we talked about last week is he actually loves you. But in addition to loving you, he wants you. He does. He actually chose you because he wants to be in relationship with you. And it was a choice that he made with you in mind. He chose that. He didn't have to. He chose that. So think about that. You're chosen. So we talked a lot about that last week. And everything else is built on that foundation. Because if you get that one a little bit crooked, I know, how you doing, sweetheart? I can't compete with babies. They win every time. If you get that one a little bit wrong, what happens is relationship starts to feel like obligatory rituals that we have to do in order to make God happy. Does that make sense? And God doesn't want us to get that wrong. He wants us to understand, I love you. I want you. I want relationship with you. I don't want to own you in the sense of you're a trophy for me. I want relationship with you, and it's something that I'm choosing. 
So that's the basic. He wants us to make sure we get that. On top of that one, we're going to actually talk about how today we're going to start talking about how does God develop a relationship with us because he's invisible. He's a spirit. He doesn't have a, in this era of time, he's not here in a flesh form. He's spirit. So how do we connect with him in a spirit? Well, one of the things we're learning about is that relationships are usually enhanced and strengthened by the, by the function of the people's voice in that relationship. Voice. Everyone say voice. God has a voice. And he wants to speak to you in a voice. And it sounds like this. I'm just kidding. So, but he has a tone. He has a, he has a voice. And, and he speaks to people. And we can understand that relationships are strengthened by learning the sound of the voice of the one you love. So my wife, Pastor Sheree, and I have been married for over 30 years. I know we don't look that old, but we really are. Except for her. She just is timeless. I'm actually getting old. But she's timeless. We've been married for 30 years. And I know the sound of her voice. I've learned the, uh, the harmonic overtone and the bouquet of her voice. She is unique in voice to me. I can pick her out of a, of a crowd of a million. I can hear her voice and just know. All right? So I know her voice. But in addition to her, the sound of her voice, I actually can recognize her by the phrases that she uses. For example, if someone imitates Cherie's voice and mimics her very well, but they're cursing with profanity like, a, like just whatever, I would know that's not my wife. Why? Because though it may sound a lot like her, she doesn't talk that way. So I've recognized her by the sound of her voice and by the choices of her words that reflect the values of who she is. Does that make sense? So I want to just lay some ideas out for you this morning about the way we hear God because God is very clear in his Bible. In fact, Jesus said it with his own words. It's our first scripture. Let's look at this together. It's coming up on the screen any minute. There it is. My sheep, what's the word? Listen to my what? Voice. voice. My sheep listen to my voice. And he's using sheep shepherd analogies because it translates through all eras of time. Everybody understands what that, those the relational dynamics are. But he says, my sheep listen to my voice. I what? Know them. And they follow me. A couple of important uh, nuances in that. Let me just set you up with a story that, that I think is, at least for me, helps connect the dots. I was raised uh, as a little guy, and we would go visit my grandparents in Ohio uh, for Christmas. It was always one of my favorite times of the year. We'd love it. So I loved going to my papa and nana's house. My papa had beagles, and I loved little puppies when I was a kid. You know, I just loved the whole idea. And, but he and my nana had an interesting relationship. And so she had a t television out in the living room that she would watch. He was in the kitchen dining room area, and he had a little black and white TV in there that he would watch. And it was interesting because I was, didn't have any idea what married dynamics were. I just knew that my, my nana always watched TV out there. My papa always watched TV in here. And I liked being around with papa, so I'd sit there and watch him with amazement as he drank his coffee. Because, and you're thinking, well, it's a big deal about that. Because for whatever reason, he would take his coffee and pour it out of the cup into the saucer. And drink it out of the saucer. <laughs> it just mystified me. Why would you do that? It's a perfectly good cup. Years later, when I was old enough to actually ask him, I said, Papa, why do you pour your coffee out of a perfectly good cup into a saucer and drink it out of a saucer? He goes, oh, to cool it down. It's like, oh, that makes sense. But my, nothing about that has, applies to the sermon today. Here's what I really was trying to, to go with that story. So I'm in, the, I'm, but I'm watching. I'd be hanging out with my papa, and he's got the TV on kind of soft, and he'd be, he'd be reading his Beagle magazines. Imagine a magazine. Remember those magazines? 
They still kind of have them, but anyway, there's a big deal because Beagle Magazine, and he would be reading his Beagle Magazine, TV was on, his coffee was steaming out of his saucer, and, he would, and my Nana would be out in the, in the other room, and she'd be going, hey, his name, was, his name was Clarence, but everybody called him Shots. Hey, Shots! The da 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 And she'd just be going and going and going, and he was in a rhythm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. His, his eyes never left the Beagle magazine, but he had figured out how to give a mm-hmm in a way that made her think he was actually listening. But he was not listening. I saw it because I was watching him with my, he was reading his magazine. He was not listening. He was hearing, but not listening. Got it? Jesus said, hey, my sheep, in one translation it does say here, but my sheep listen. They listen. How, how many of you have ever said this when you're trying to communicate to a, to a child <laughs> or a spouse, which maybe you think acts like a child. I don't know. But anyway, so, but how many of you have ever had something you really wanted them to, to hear and you, you started by going, look at me. <laughs> we instinctively know that that works because when we're, when we're babies, we actually do this. In fact, one of my fond memories of my daughter, uh, La- Pastor Lacey, who was leading the worship uh, this morning, when she was just a little kiddo, just a toddler, she would try to get my attention. And so if per, per chance she didn't think I was listening, she would crawl up in my lap and she'd put her hands on my face and turn my head. So I looked at her. You probably don't remember that, but you did. We instinctively know if we're going to listen, we need to look. And so really what I want to talk to you about today is the the way we align our lives with the ability to hear the voice of God. Because number one, we can. God created us with that ability. Number two, he'll show us how. Because he's all about our relationship, not our performance. So he's not trying to get us to act like good Christians. He's trying to enjoy relationship with us that changes the way we live. So relationship is everything to him basics. The basic we're talking about today is the Bible and God's voice. One of the things that's important to actually get a hold of when it comes to connecting with God is in Hebrews, is is voiced in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. It says this, it's impossible to please God without faith. In other words, when it comes to the issue of pleasing God, everyone say pleasing God. When it comes to pleasing God, we have to have faith. Faith is trust. Trust in him. And pleasing him is not about performing. Pleasing him is about the relationship because what pleases him most is not performance. What pleases God is our heart and his connected in relationship. That's what God is pleased with, our relationship. So he's all about drawing close to us and having us draw close to him because relationship is what he's looking for. But then he goes on to say, anybody who wants to come to him must believe that he exists. You see it? Because if God in your mind is an idea, if God is a religion, then you can't come to him. But he says, if you actually want to come to me, first thing is you got to believe I'm here. I'm real. I'm God, I'm real, I'm here. So you've got to believe he, that he is and that he is a rewarder. Everyone say rewarder. rewarder. Rewarder of those who sincerely or diligently seek him. Okay, so I just want to go on the record today uh, of, of stating the obvious. God is really important. And the ability to walk and live in relationship with him is really important. And he says, I want you to understand the benefits of being in relationship with me. Imagine having God on your side. Imagine walking through the crisis that you're about to walk into without God in it with you. God said, I will be with you. I'll be in every circumstance with you. I will never leave you. I'll be in it with you. Why? Because relationship is everything. But he says, I'll reward those who diligently seek me. 
reward those who diligently seek me. So he is real, and he rewards those who diligently seek him. What does he reward those who diligently seek him with? Relationship. Relationship is the prize. But that's different than the way we tend to think about in our Western mindset. Because what we do is we try to figure out how do we get out of people what we need from them or want from them. So we figure out if I say it this way, do it that way. If I do this for you, then you got to do that for me. And then we learn how to leverage what we want out of each other by using each other. Now we don't say it that way, but that's how the West often works. How many of you have ever felt used? Just gives you that warm, fuzzy feeling, doesn't it? It's like, oh, I just love this. I love being around you because you're such a user. <laughs> no, we hate that. We do not like being used. You know why? Because when somebody's using us, they don't see us. They're not connecting with us. They're extorting something from me I was not going to give them. They were using me as if I were a utility, a commodity. God says, I reward you with the relationship. How do we know that? Because we see Jesus, he taught this, the, the corollary or the other side of this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. He said, listen, the Father knows everything you need. But if you'll seek him and his righteousness or that right relationship, if you'll put his kingdom and, his right, and the rightness with him, that relationship, as your first priority, guess what you get? You get him and everything he brings with him. So I'm, believe it or not, in just a few minutes, I'm going to give you four practical ways to actually hear the voice of God. But before I do that, I'm trying to give you the heart of here, here's why it's so important that this actually works. Because relationship doesn't happen unless there's connection and communication. And that's what God is looking for. That's what God is looking for. He rewards those who sincerely seek him. What does he reward us with? Relationship and everything that goes with that. But the reward goes to people who what? Sincerely seek him. In other words, he's not a casual afterthought of, oh, I think God could probably help me out with this. Or, you know, God, if you're really there, then prove it this way because I'm trying to make a point with my friend. Or, I mean, none of that kind of stuff moves God at all. Why? Because you're not sincerely seeking him. But for those who, sincerely, who believe he is and rewards those that sincerely seek him, he brings the power of his presence into their lives and everything that comes with it. So I want to talk to you today about the basic of the Bible and God's voice. Because his voice and he, and he are the same. He is his voice. In a similar way, I was trying to illustrate the issue with my, my wife, Pastor Cherie. I know her voice. I know her values. I connect with her through her voice. I know her. That's what God is wanting us to understand. How do we get to know each other? And by, and by the way, let me just say it this way. How many of you know how to speak? Okay, so I've like asked three or four questions, and about most of you won't raise your hand, no matter what. So I'm just going to call you for what you are. You're just, you're just going to sit there and look at me. That's fine, as long as you're not Instagramming or watching the sports or something on your phone. So, but here's, here's what I want you to know. You know, the idea of learning to speak to someone is something that's learned over time. We have uh, a daughter named uh, Pastor Lacey Mercer. She was just leading worship, for those of you that I've not had a chance to meet and don't know well. Uh, she is, uh, today is her birthday. Happy birthday. And since you're not 30, I cannot say people how old you are. She's 28, since she's not 30. Once you get a three in front of your number, you can never say a woman's age. So just said, guys, don't ever do it. Don't even ask. Just. But my point is, we had the privilege of raising her. And she grew up in our house. Right now, we have the privilege of uh, fostering a little baby girl, we call her Sweets. Her name is technically Chloe, but, her, but we call her Sweets. She's almost 11 months old. She, she knows for sure one word, dad, dad. <laughs> Come on. 
He goes, dad, dad. I, I hear it all over the house, and my heart just stops for a second and just weather veins right in. I go, I know where a baby's at. Okay, so here's the thing. Right now, she, and she's very mobile, so she could crawl like 100 miles an hour. She's going she to be walking and running soon, but for right now, she's crawling. But she can cover some ground. It's pretty scary, actually. So, but I'll be in, the, in one side of the, of the kitchen, and she'll go, dad, dad. And then she'll start crawling at me. Dad, 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 dad. And I can hardly stand in one spot. I want to run over and grab her real quick, but I'm, I'm letting her kind of work that language out. And so she'd crawl over, she'd get to my feet, and then she'll put her hands on my feet, and she'll go, dad, dad, and she'll start crawling up my legs until she's standing up, and I can't take it anymore. They gotta reach down, they gotta pick her up, you know, uh, like I'm dad, dad, I know. Now we're teaching her mama. Because everybody knows mama's what matters. But my, my point is, she's 11 months old, so she's, she's been living for hundreds of days now. She knows one word. Got it? Now, Pastor Lacey grew up in our house and for years had to listen to me talk. Bless her heart. Because you're like, you only have to put up with me for about 30, 40 minutes every Sunday. That's about all you got to put up with me. Bless her heart, she had to actually put up with me in the house. But she learned words, like some really good ones, like anthropomorphically and uh, Pythagorean theorems and just things along those lines that are just delightful. Soliloquy. I mean, how long has it been since you said the word soliloquy? Let's just say it together. Soliloquy. You should look that up if you don't know what that means. Like, oh my God, I go to Life League Church and we learn weird words. Awesome. Okay, my point, and my point in saying is it's possible to learn to hear and understand words, but it won't happen in a minute. It takes a little bit of time. So right now, in our household, Pastor Shereen and I are talking all the time. Mostly her. I'm listening a lot. <laughs> Don't tell her I said that. I mean, like, so much trouble right now. I'm totally busted. But Sweets is listening to lots of words. She doesn't hear. She doesn't know how to understand any of them. She just, they're just syllables that go by. She doesn't know, but she's starting to learn. So I want you to know right now that... It is possible for you to hear the voice of God and learn to talk to God in a way that's connected. But it will take a little time, but that's what God is saying. I reward those who diligently seek me. In other words, if you diligently seek me, this is going to happen. But if you just are dismissive of me, and like, well, God, if you're really there, prove it. Different story. Does that make sense? So I want to inspire you today in the last few minutes of, this, of the message. We're going to go through four s- simple steps that actually are part of us learning to hear God. And the first one is based on diligence. Everyone say diligence. diligence. Sincerity. And that is this. If you're going to actually position yourself to learn to hear God, I'm going to encourage you to write this down. Number one, set an appointment with God. Set an appointment with God. It's not that he requires appointments. But here's the practical reality. If you don't intentionally set that time to meet with God, chances are it will never actually happen. Chances are it'll never actually happen. So set an appointment with God every day. You're going to meet with him. You're going to meet with him. So what time of the day should it be that you meet with God? Everybody look at me for a second. There is a perfect time of the day for you to meet with God. It's going to come as a shock to you. But it's been proven throughout history. In every time zone, it's always 327 a.m. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Some of you are like, really? <laughs> I just shot all my credibility with you. You never listen to another word. But, but here's the, the reason I'm saying that is there is a perfect time that's best for you to hear, to meet with God. And here's the best time for you to meet God. It's when you are at your best. You ever get everybody's leftovers? So God is God, we're not. We wanna give him our best. 
And for some people in some eras of life, in some seasons of life, it's morning. And we see that pattern in Scripture a lot of times. Uh, you'll see people were rising early. Jesus, was, was, he rose early and went out to pray. And you see that pattern a lot. And that really is a, a, a pattern where you can see that someone's intentionally working. It'd be better to sleep in, but because I'm intentional with connecting with God, without, with minimal distractions, I'm going to rise early and go do that. And for some people, that actually does work. But there are some of you right now that if you actually tried to get up at, at 327 a or 8.30 a.m., you're not even aware of the world until about 10 o'clock. <laughs> Maybe you work third shift or second shift. I don't know. But my point is a specific time is not as important as setting a time. So it's prioritizing the time. For some of us, maybe it would be better to get the kids down at night and instead of just vegging out with television until we drift off into a coma. That's maybe the time where the house is pretty quiet. Then we actually set our scriptures up and we connect with God then. It would be great. In fact, if you do that, there's a bonus because you tend to think about what you went to sleep thinking about all night long. So why not drift off having just set your spirit in the word of God and get like seven or eight hours extra credit? It's just a good way to think of that, all right? But the bottom line, whatever time of the day it is, set the time that you're at your best and you can connect with God. Why? Because he doesn't deserve your leftovers. He doesn't respond to that. He's God. He cannot be not first place. So if we're going to come to him, we've got to believe he is God, and he rewards those that diligently seek him, which is prioritizing him with intentionality. So the first thing I've got to do is do that. Then what am I going to do when I'm actually there with him? If you're taking notes, write this down. Number two, be still and worship. So let's say that you, you carve out a 15 to 20 minute, maybe 30 minute, whatever that time looks like. But you can think of this as a 15 minute block. If this is not a part of your life, you'll find once you actually establish it, it will drift longer and longer until that this is a favorite spot of your day. But be still and worship actually comes from Scripture because Psalm chapter 46 the first part of verse 10 says this, be still and know that I'm God. Be still and know that I'm God. Still refers to a couple of different aspects, but for today's context, here's what I mean by that. Be still means I'm going to still the condition of my mind and focus. I'm going to, I'm going to be still. I'm going to set my mind I'm going to look at God. I'm going to be still. I'm going to focus my mind. I'm not going to sit there all just scattered and watching TV and listen to a podcast and then scanning over a, 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 a blog of some kind and then trying to figure out something on Amazon and, oh, yeah, I'm going to give God a little scripture. Here. Okay, okay, what do you say? Okay, good. I've got to be still. I've got to set my attention to God. I'm focusing on you. Be still and know that I'm God. No. Does mean understand that he's God, but it also means to, res to relate to or respond to him as God. Which means this. God is very clear about the way we actually come into his presence. Part of the, the whole purpose of the Old Testament era of humanity and the way God gave us the Old Testament part of his Bible is to teach us patterns and ways, called types and shadows, but patterns and ways that he has or ordered the, the creation to relate with him as God. And in one of those passages, he says, I want you to come into my gates with thanksgiving. It's like, come into my property with thanksgiving. Start, start coming my way with thanksgiving. It's how you start my way is with thanksgiving. And then into my courts where I'm actually at, my courts, my, that, that inner part where I'm residing, I want you to come into that with praise. Thanksgiving and praise. You know, it's interesting why God would actually say that. One of them is he's reinforcing the fact that if you're going to come to me, you have to believe that I am, and I reward those that diligently seek me as, a, as God. So when you come into his gates with thanksgiving, what are you thanking? You're thanking him as a person, as God. You're thanking him. You're not thanking a list. You're not thanking the culture. You're thanking him as God. Come, in, come into my gates, the, the, the entrance of my, my property, if you will. It's the easy way to say it. And into my presence with praise. 
What am I saying? God, you are extraordinary in every way. You are higher than everything I could imagine ever facing. You have overwhelmed me with your loving kindness. You never cease to amaze me with your creativity in the way that you actually interface with who I am as a person. You boggle my mind that you would even consider me as a person, that you would pay attention to me because you're the God of the universe. How, just put yourself in that position. It's like, would you rather be approached that way or like, oh, it's you again? So sometimes the way God says, here's how you do it, actually makes sense. He says, I reward those that, I, if you're going to come to me, you have to believe that I'm actually there and I reward those that diligently seek me. And one of the ways we do that is to set an appointment. We prioritize that. When we're there, we are still, which means look at me. Right? I'm going to set my mind on you. I'm, 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 I'm going to train my mind to focus on you. Yeah, but what about the fact that I forgot the iron is turned on? You know, we'll go down and turn the iron off and then go back, you know. But what about the bill? What about this? One of the fastest ways to actually train your mind is to put a little notepad there when you're in your spot with God. And every thought that comes through, just write that down and it's off your mind. And you go back to God. And over time, you train your mind. Nope, 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 nope. Nope, it's just God. And worship. Sometimes it actually is helpful when it comes to worshiping God, enter his gates with thanksgiving into his courts with praise. Sometimes music is actually helpful. It's the language of the spirit and soul that God gave us the ability to connect through music. It's why music is so, is so compelling and so emotional. And so uh, it, it, it passes all the filters of our mind and we just connect through music. And so sometimes it's better if we can actually play worship when we're in that mode because especially first person singular uh, pronoun, uh, first person pronoun uh, work, lyrics that help us connect with God in his personhood. So we're worshiping, we're singing to God. Then you may be thinking, I'm not sure where to find that. Let me give you a quick reference. If you go to lifelinkchurch.com in resources, we have a, a worship playlist on Spotify. You just click on that. If you don't know where else to go, you can at least go there. But, the, but the YouTube is full of wonderful playlists, those kinds of things. But you're looking for worship music that is lyrically aligned with God as he reveals himself in Scripture. Okay? Worship. So if we're going to actually connect with God and hear his voice, number one, we've got to prioritize it. Number two, we've got to set an appointment. When we're in the appointment, what do we do? We, huh? Be still and worship. Then, write this down, we read, we, we pray and read. We pray and read. What does that mean? Pray literally just means talk to God. There's lots of uh, approaches and understandings and teachings on prayer, but for today, if this is not part of your normal practice and pattern, let me just say, here's the best way to think of it. When you've prioritized God, you, you've set your appointment. When you've actually stilled your mind and you focus on God, when you've begun to worship and you're connected with that sense of where he's at in that worship, then what do you say when, when you come to what to pray about? Pray whatever's in your heart in that mode. Just pray what's on your heart. Maybe it's a concern you have about your health. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's the fact that you're, stru you're struggling with different dynamics of people in your life or you're uncertain about direction or maybe, you're, maybe you're, you feel like God's distant or whatever. But, but the bottom line is when you prioritize, when you set the appointment and then you are still and you worship, then you actually go through the process of connecting with God with your own words. Then just talk to him about whatever's on your heart. Then read his Bible. Read his Bible. Then we read his Bible. You might be thinking, well, where do I read? It's a lot of words. It's a lot of chapters. It's a lot of books. I can't pronounce most of them. It's kind of intimidating. Let me, if you're unfamiliar with the Bible as a, as a volume or a book, there are two big parts to the Bible. One is called the Old Testament. It's towards the front of the book, and it's the bigger part. And then there is the New Testament, which is the, the back part of the Bible. And they're basically, they're lined up that way because the first part, the Old Testament, has to do with the, 
with the way the arrangement or the agreement or the covenant is a better way to say it that God was actually working with humanity to help them understand who he is and how he works that's most of the old that's the Old Testament then Jesus is born God in the flesh and the New Testament begins with his birth when when Jesus the Son of God left heaven and became born in in human form and lived a sinless life on the earth to bring the message of the good news of the gospel of salvation and relationship with God. That's the beginning of the New Testament. And the first four, what we call books, are, are, are titled Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And those are four men that God used to capture the history of the life and teachings of Christ. And then after that is a book called, in the New Testament called Acts, which is the workings of the people who followed Christ, who followed the teachings of Christ under the, the ministry and the power of the Holy Spirit. It's powerful. Okay, so that's the two big sections, Old Testament, the first part, and then New Testament, the, the second part. In the New Testament, there are the four books I told you about. One of them is the book called John. Everyone say John. Like say, like John. I'm like, John. Say like John, John. John, do be do John, John. I'm just, all I'm trying to do is help you stick on a spot. If you don't know where to read, many times people find that's one of the easier spots to just open and start reading. And you won't, you won't understand everything, but just start in there and start reading there. Okay? Everybody got it? Now, to help everyone with this, a little bit later, and in a few more weeks, we'll start into the September fall semester, and our whole church is going to walk through a spiritual depth or growth or growing in God kind of campaign, if you will. We're going to all do this together. It'll be a lot easier because there'll be people in your life groups doing it with you. You're going to love it. But for today, I'm just saying, when it comes down to the issue of prioritizing meeting, we're talking about the basic of learning how to hear God's word, hear his voice. We have to prioritize meeting with him. Second one is we've got to be still and worship. And then the third thing is we're going to pray and read. Pray just means talk to God about what's on your heart in that moment. And then read. If you're not sure where to start reading, uh, open the Bible and go to what? Doobie doo down. John. John. Waka, waka, waka. John. <laughs> okay. If you don't have a Bible and want a Bible, let us know at the information, at the information center. We're going to pick up and provide Bibles for people that don't have them. But if you have a smartphone, you actually have access to lots of them on an app called YouVersion. YouVersion. All right. So download that one and look for what book? John. One of the reasons why it's appropriate to start we technically can start anywhere, but start there because it's relatable. But the scripture gives us, God tells us in his Bible, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, that all scripture is actually inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true, make us realize what's wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we're wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Now listen to verse 17. God uses it, or his Bible, scripture, to prepare and equip his people, that'd be us, to do every good work. So, if we're going to learn to hear God's voice, number one, we've got to prioritize it, and we do that practically speaking by setting an appointment. When we're in our time with God, we, we're still and worship. After that, we pray and read. All right, and then we write this down, number four, we listen and write. We listen and write. So after we've read, we're, when we're reading, we're actually asking God to show us in his Bible what he wants to talk to us about for me. Hey, let me give you a pointer right here. This is a pr practical pointer. When you are meeting with God, meet for you. In other words, don't find all the problems with your husband and get scriptures for him. God knows he's a problem. You don't have to remind him. I'm just kidding. I'm, I always pick on guys because I am one. I can't pick on a woman because all the men would get mad at me. But, but my point is, what I've discovered is as long as we are listening to God through his Bible for somebody else, it never gets to us. 
So you're asking God, speak to me about what you want to grow, change, transform something about me. Got it? So then you listen, you're reading through, and all of a sudden, you'll, you'll read across a phrase, a word, a sentence, a verse. There'll be something, and all this, it's like it starts coming out of the page at you, and you hear it, and you feel it. Something shifts on the inside of you. It's like, ooh, there's, I've never seen it that way, or wow. And then you say, God, what are you talking to me about, about for me? And then when, when you feel that, then you start writing that down. Writing that down. Writing it down does two things. Number one, it helps you retain. Everyone say retain. It'll help you retain what God talks to you about because if he talked to you about it and you forgot it, did it help you? Probably not. When he talks to you about it, you got to write it down. you got to retain it so you can apply it. But then also, writing it down helps train you to hear. And here's what I mean. Many times, remember my illustration about baby sweets? She knows like one word right now. Here's what you're going to discover. When you're starting this process, there's a good chance you're going to get a lot of it wrong. I'm going to just take the pressure off. You're not going to get all of it right. You're going to get a lot of it wrong initially because you're not sure what you're listening to. And, and, you know, maybe you think about, you know, PJ masks or something. When God doesn't care about PJ masks. He's going to talk to you about something about you. You're like, what's PJ mask? You're clearly not raising kids then if you don't know what PJ masks are. Wow, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> I'm clearly raising a baby in my house. Isn't that, it's obvious. I can't get this song out of my head now. <laughs> Jesus, help me. Jesus, take the wheel. I gotta land this. <laughs> Listen, you never know what you're gonna get at LifeLink, but it will be fun. I guarantee you, it, uh, uh, better yet, it will be real, that's for sure. All right, I'm almost done, you guys. The point is, we're, we're, you're going to get it wrong. You're going to get it wrong. But you want to be able to sit down with somebody who actually knows what God sounds like and knows what his words are like, so you can sit down and say, hey, this is what it seemed to me God would be saying. Is this really God? You know, something funny happened to me this week. I was going down the road and I was listening to voicemail after voicemail of, you've been selected for this insurance product and you can get this too. And it's like, I don't know how they get my cell phone number, but everybody's calling me about opportunities that I can get insurance and stuff. So, but I just delete, delete, delete. And then I hear this one voicemail. It's like, hey, it's, uh, and I'm, I'm not going to say the actual voicemail itself, but he's basically saying, hey, it's an old friend from the past, and I was thinking about you. You're my favorite pastor, and blah, 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 blah. And it'd be good to talk to him in town, blah, 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 blah. And if you don't recognize this voice, don't bother calling me back. <laughs> so I did what you would do. I instantly looked at the caller ID, and it was not there. <laughs> I thought, I think that's, and a name came to mind, I think that's him. Sounds like his sense of humor, but I wasn't 100% sure. So you know what I did? I thought, who would know him? And I forwarded that voicemail to a friend of mine who I thought would know him. He didn't, but his wife recognized him. So they circled all the way back and said, hey, we think it's so-and-so. And I said, that's what I was thinking too. So after that confirmation, guess what I did? I called him up and said, dude, what's going on? It's so good to hear your voice. I thought it was him. Sounded like him. Was pretty sure, but wasn't exactly sure. So what did I do? I I took that message and said it in front of somebody else who would know it and say, is this really him? And sure enough, it was. And so then I was able to finish the conversation. We had a good time and all that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? So what I'm saying is you're probably in the beginning going to get it wrong a lot, but you won't know it if you don't write it down and sit down in community with others that are a little bit further down the road and say, hey, this is what I was thinking. You know, I've been married for 17 years, and I'm kind of bored in my marriage, and so I really felt like God was saying that I should leave my home and journey to whatever else and and find somebody on Christian Mingle that I could go date now. And it just felt like there was peace in my heart, and it was a sense of adventure, and it was going to be exciting. And I just felt like that's what God wanted me to do, because he was going to give me the desires of my heart. And Lord knows I'm not, I'm not getting my desires right now. Isn't that something God would do? Going to say no. It's not the way he talks. Got it? You see what I'm talking about? So when we're going through these practical, these practical points, there's reasons. Prioritize him. Look at him. 
When you're there, what's number two? I know it's, it's been about 10 minutes, but I'm still trying to get you to get this down. You can look at your notes if you want. Okay, and, and then three is? Pray and read. And then four is? Listen and write. And pretty soon, guess what you'll be able to do? You'll have a growing understanding of who God is, how his voice sounds like, what to start responding to, and then you actually start applying it and obeying your life. Guess what you're doing? You're literally following Jesus by following his words. Remember the very first scripture we talked about? Jesus said, my sheep, what? Listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. You know why they were able to follow him? They knew his voice. They knew his voice. We're going to pick up this uh, journey next week on the basics. Did you guys get something out of this this morning? Can we just thank God for that? God, thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. I want to encourage you uh, this, this morning. Uh, there, let me give you four of the fill-ins that I know are on your, on your sheet. For those of you that are writing this down, they're the, they're the fill-ins for the word SOAP, S-O-A-P. S stands for scripture. Watch this pattern. Scripture. O stands for observation. A stands for application. P stands for prayer. Here's practically what that means. You, do, you can apply this soap in your mind to help you remember this. When you sit down and finally get to the part you're going to read the Bible, we're going to start with the Scripture, where we're going to meet God in His Scripture. Then you're going to observe. Remember when the phrase or the word starts coming alive to you? You're going to observe that. You're going to pay attention to that. Then you're going to say, God, how does this apply to me? That's the application. Here's what I think you're wanting me to do. You want me to stop cussing today. I know this is going to be really hard, but today you're telling me to stop cussing. Or you're, you're telling me to, to, whatever that is, the ap- application of that observation. And then you put it back to the Lord in a prayer. So you're talking to him. So, so God, today I hear, I, I see in your scripture the ob- observation that you're talking to me about this. You would like for me to do this. So I'm praying this back to you that I'm committing to do this. So that's, that's the way that the soap idea works, okay? Let me pray for you guys this morning. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you for your faithfulness. You're a good, good father. Right now, I pray, Lord, for courage and strength to come on the the hearts of the men and women, boys and girls in this room today. That, Lord, we would hear and respond to your leadership today. And that we'd be drawn into that relationship with you in a fresh and, and new compelling way. And I thank you for what you'll do as you strengthen the relationship we have with you in Jesus' name. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I want to connect with those of you that are listening today and you say, I know I need a relationship with God. And I need to say yes to Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior today. In about 30 seconds, I'm going to lead us in a life change prayer. And that prayer is basically the acknowledgement that God is good, that he loves us. Number two, that Jesus died for our sins. Number three is the decision to give him control of our lives. And number four is the commitment to live for him as our, as our God and Savior. Many of you in this room right now know that this is your day. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, this is your decision day to decide to follow him. So in just a moment, I'm going to ask when I finish counting to three that you would slip your hand up and say, that's me. I'm going to pray this prayer for life change today. All right? With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, one, you already know who you are. I don't have to talk you into it. You already know. It's not complicated. It's not hard. You already know it. Two, I'm not going to embarrass you in any way. All I'm going to do is when I say three, I'm going to ask you to lift your hand up and leave it up until I finish connecting and counting so I know who I'm praying with that we're going to pray together. If you need to give your life to Jesus today and you know this is your day, then ready, three. Slip your hand up right now. Leave it up just for a moment until I can count and connect. There's one. Who else? Who else? Two. Thank you, I see that. Who else? Anyone else? Okay, you can put your hands down. Let's pray this prayer out loud together. Heavenly Father, come on everyone. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me enough to tell me truth in your Bible. Jesus, thank you for loving me enough to die for my sins. I confess all of my sins before you and ask 
that you would forgive me for them all, that you would wash me and cleanse me and make me brand new. Today, I'm giving my whole life to you. I'm deciding to follow you as my only Lord, my only God and Savior for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, come on, you guys, let's celebrate that. Thank you for watching the LifeLink Church video podcast. It is our prayer that you heard a word from God today. If you have a story to share about how God is working in your life, then let us know and send us an email at mystory at lifelinkchurch.com.